All right, we're going to be comparing QA versus QC. What is QA? QA stands for Quality Insurance, and this is a total program made up of multiple areas uh, in your radiology department. They address ish aspects of quality, including customer service, image interpretation, the accuracy of diagnosis, and the distribution of radiologist reports. There's some steps to QA. Identify the problem, monitor the problem, and hopefully resolve the problem. Uh, it's sometimes referred to as continuous quality improvement, or CQI. It, that is called the process of good service. The principal goal of quality assurance is to provide accurate and timely diagnosis. Their secondary goal is to minimize radiation exposure to the patient. QA deals with people and QC is your equipment. So if you can put those two separate in your notes, so QA people, QC equipment. Um, together, they're a great team, but they want the best possible image quality, the lowest possible exposure to the patient and minimum costs for all, right? Hospitals are always looking for ways to minimize costs. Quality control, what's quality control? Well, we just talked about it, that it involves your equipment. It is also sometimes referred to as total quality management or TQM. So you might see that abbreviation in your board review. Um, the QC programs, they're required by the Joint Commission, so TJC. They were formerly known as JCO, so you might see, hear that as well. Um, but it involves a lot of people. It involves you as technologists. Um, you guys are the ones who are frontline with the equipment and the patients. Um, and then there's a lot of background and other people involved in all of the testing that might go on. Um, but you're really the frontline person to tell them when a machine isn't working properly. There are a lot of tests performed as part of a QC program. Uh, the acceptance test, routine maintenance, and error maintenance um, are your three main types. These QC tests are what I want you to really focus on for your board review. And we'll go through those um, one by one. This chart is what you need to know. The test, how often it's tested, okay, and the tolerance, the tolerance percentage, right? So those are definite flashcards for you to make, okay? So filtration, um, it's we're looking at beam quality. It's tested using a digital dosimeter. They measure the half value layer and it's performed annually. Uh, you guys know what filtration is, but this was just a little bit review for you. It's going to remove the low energy or those soft rays from the beam. A filter, it's usually a piece of aluminum, right, placed on the tube, on the outside of the tube. Um, filtration lowers patient skin dose. You guys know that. Types, inherent and added. Um, inherent filtration, that's inherent to the tube, right, the oil in the glass envelope. Added is anything added on. Total beam filtration um, is inherent plus added. And then there's some compensating filters that can be placed on. Um, wedge or boomerang are different types of filters that I know you've already probably seen in your equipment courses. Total filtration, I'm sure you've seen this number as well, but it has to be at least 2.5 millimeters aluminum equivalent. And half value layer, just a reminder on that, it's the amount of filtration that reduces the beam intensity by half. So half value layer, cuts it in half, not super hard. All right, collimation, uh, light field alignment. So how accurate is your light field to what actually produces on your image? So the light field in our lab, right, is way off. Our detents off, our lights are in. <laughs> They do not line up, right, when we make an exposure. But in your actual um, clinical world, in the hospital, what your light field is open to should be what your exposure is. And if it's not, you need to alert someone. It has to be accurate within 2% of the SID. So if you have a word problem that gives you SID, whether it's centimeters or inches, um, it's going to ask you to find 2%. and that's fairly simple. PBL, just a reminder, it means positive beam limitation. What does that mean? That's the one where when you have a 10 by 12 cassette and you put it in a bucky and the light automatically opens to a 10 by 12, that's the positive beam limitation. And that's within 2%. So same as the collimation one. 
effective focal spot size, it should be within 50% um, of what the equipment specs said it would be, right? Um, you guys know where the focal spot is. You know the actual focal spot is larger than the effective. You know what the line focus principle is, but just a reminder to go back through those terminology. To test for focal spot size, there's three main tests, slit camera, which is the most reliable star test pattern and pinhole camera. And there's just a little picture over here of those, what they might look like. Your KVP, it must be accurate within 10%. So what does that mean? If you set 100 KVP on your control panel, when your image comes up, whatever the actual KVP that was produced needs to be within 10%. As a technologist, you want whatever you're setting on your control panel to be what your tube is actually producing, right? This is just a quick review of KVP. Um, it controls the energy or quality of the x-rays produced. I always remember KVP is quality because it has an L in it and kilovolts has an L. Um, so KVP is your penetrating. Just remember your KVP connects to wavelength um, and your penetrability. It does also affect receptor exposure, um, but by the 15% rule. And just remember, increased KVP by 15% actually doubles your receptor exposure. Timer. Your timer should be within 5% of the time chosen um, for exposures over 10 milliseconds. You guys know where your timer is in your circuit, but just a quick picture to remind you. The spinning top test is one of the tests used to test the timer accuracy. So there's two different types. So this spinning top has is a circle with um, dots. And for single phase, you will see dots for certain seconds. So 12 dots at 1 tenth, 24 dots at 1 fifth. Um, I've seen some of this come up in board review, but I haven't seen a ton of it come out, out on the actual board. So you might just want to make a flashcard on that. The synchronous top is used for three phase equipment. So you'll see on the picture, it's not dots, but it's these arc um, sort of images here. So when it's arcs, it's three phase. When it's dots, it is single phase. Okay. Exposure linearity. Uh, what does that mean? So adjacent MA stations should be within 10% of one another. This is performed annually. So you guys know as you're setting techniques, there's a lot of combinations of MA and time that produce the same mass value. Um, this is testing the machine to produce a constant level of exposure, even though you're varying your MA and time, it should still be giving you a constant level. It can be tested with a step wedge and densitometer. So this, one, this picture is just giving you an example of different MA and time options and being able to test that. So linearity, 10%. Uh, reproducibility. So Radiation intensity of sequential exposures, meaning kind of one after another, um, should, shouldn't vary more than 5%. Sorry, I'm not sure that sentence made a ton of sense. Um, what does that mean? So any exposure made using the same factors should produce the same levels of image contrast and receptor exposure. Automatic exposure control. I know you guys know what this is, but just a reminder for your AEC, those are your photo timing cells and accurate part positioning is essential, right? If your body parts not over the photo cell, it's not gonna help you. Fluoro, uh, the fluoro exposure rate, it's tested with a digital dosimeter and the dose um, should not be more than 100 milligray uh, per minute. That I see on the board review all the time, so please make a flashcard of that. You guys know what your automatic brightness control is, the ABC on the image intensifier, but just a reminder, um, and they will check to ensure that the radiation dose hitting input phosphor is constant. Quality control of digital equipment. Um, so there's always initial acceptance testing when new equipment is purchased. It's tested to make sure it matches the specifications. Um, physics will come in and do some testing even after a major repair. So if a tube goes down 
and we have to replace um, the tube in any of the rooms, it needs to go through an acceptance test first before we can use it on a patient. Um, the CR plates, some maintenance, you're gonna inspect and clean the imaging plate regularly. Erase those cassettes every 48 hours. So those CR cassettes are supposed to be secondary erased every 48 hours, even though I'm sure you, they don't you do that in reality, right? Because we're not using them a ton. Um, monitors, essentially the monitors, they need to be dust free. Um, and most of the monitors are these flat panel LCD screens. And you guys know this, but the monitors at the radiologist workstations are much higher resolution um, than the monitors on our control panels or the monitors on the portable, right? Monitor controls the brightness of the image. So remember, brightness is not controlled by MAS. That's receptor exposure. Brightness is actually the measurement of luminance of an area of radiographic image, which is displayed on a monitor. There is a QC monitor test pattern um, that evaluates the monitor. And I've seen a couple of this terminology come up and it's in your textbook, but I haven't seen a ton of it on the board review. Um, but here are sort of the terms that you might see um, and how they're measured. Usually these are the ones that are measuring the monitors and they're the test patterns. So these are the two different kind of image test patterns that I found. Um, so you might see these used in um, clinical monitor testing. And then lead integrity check. So this includes all type of lead. Um, so aprons, gloves, gonado shields, thyroid shields, any of the shielding that we have in our department has to be tested annually. We're looking to see if there's any cracks or breaks in the lead lining, which is why it's important never to fold your lead apron. This is done using fluoroscopy equipment. And then all of the lead aprons you wear should have a documented date when it was inspected on the inside of it. Um, or they have the barcodes. At our clinical site, we have the barcode um, that they'll be able to scan and track um, the date that it was um, checked. Service personnel, so our um, engineering friends in, in the quarter that we run to when everything breaks. Um, but they are actually really important in helping ensure that the patient is getting um, a quality image and not more radiation than they need, right? But they use a program of preventative maintenance. What does that mean? They try and do maintenance on the machines before it breaks. Um, it's usually semi-annually. There's a series of equipment tests that they'll perform either early in the mornings or late at night or on the weekends, most of the time when we're not there. And they try and hop in the rooms whenever we are not in there kind of using it up. And then they might be an engineer with the hospital or they might come directly from the equipment manufacturer. So if our clinical engineers can't um, or don't know how to fix whatever the problem is, they're gonna call in some um, engineers that work directly for the company. So you might see that as well. All right, I'm gonna stop there and I'll meet you back here for the part two.